very, very eventful past few months, and a lot has happened. And I've really just been questioning on like where to start with everything, and I can't come up with an answer. So I'm just gonna start from ground zero and bring you guys along. My name's Caleb, I now own Backward Purpose Bus Conversions. This is our bus, and we just got this new space up here in Wilmington, North Carolina, and uh, now we're turning school buses into tiny homes for other people. This is the, uh, this is the second, third, this is the third full build. I've worked on about a dozen buses so far. There's a lot to be done, there's a lot that's going on. So I really just wanna start from ground zero and kinda of like bring you guys along. There's a couple of things on my list that I need to get done, so this is gonna be like a vlog style, just follow along with the journey, us trying to figure out all of these things. I'm a husband, I'm a father of two. Milo's four, Ella Rose is two years old. Milo's four, Ella Rose is two. We're new or brand new to a new area that we know nobody. Um, the only thing we have right now is this bus and this shop, which is about 2,800 square feet. We've got work to be done. We've got work to be done in the future. I have a couple things on my list that I need to get done today, and they're a collective amount of things. Um, another which is swapping out the door handle for this. We're gonna get rid of this deadbolt and just do a regular latch thing, and then there's other things to be done. So let's just get to it. Got all this stuff. Drum set, piano, fridge, my whole computer for editing that I don't even use after I got it finished being built. But we're gonna start with this stuff. The new latch system. So our bus is a 2005 International, and it got uh, hit down here by the previous bus driver. This bottom corner and the top corner are about an inch more narrow. So when I was trying to put a door up, I made a video about it. Um, when I was trying to put the door up, I couldn't get one that would just work efficiently, so I ended up having to make my own custom door. So I welded this, I did the Dutch door because my wife wanted to make it more complicated for me. Diamond inlay, polycarbonate, plexiglass stuff. I wanted like an industrial, industrial um, handle, and because I thought it worked well with the aesthetic of the whole bus build, and I couldn't find like a latch that I wanted that was more, so I just went with a deadbolt, and now, they came out with one that looks better. So I'm gonna swap this out because this isn't as efficient as I want it to be. And we're actually probably gonna be selling our bus. And I think just having the actual door handle, that way you can shut it and it stays, is gonna be the choice that people want. So. Nice. I was hoping we'd be able to make this work without any modifications, and I think we are golden. You know, so I'm, I'm I bought everything on my tools and stuff as a beginner because I didn't plan on doing this like very long. Like I was just trying to do my own bus. So I got all the cheap Ryobi tools. I've been very impressed with these tools. The only downside to them is all of you guys give me crap about the Ryobi tools and that if that I need like prof professional grade stuff. And uh, now I gotta go spend $1,500 in some cool looking Milwaukee tools because I feel like a little boy using these green tools. And I'm just saying, it's your guys' fault and peer pressure that's gonna make me spend a bunch of money. But these did, these did the job. So if you're doing a build, and you're not trying to do this professionally, then get the Ryobi's guys. If you're gonna make money at it, and you don't care about people's opinions, then go ahead and get the Ryobi's. But if you care about people's opinions like me, just spend the money and get the Milwaukee. All these fanboys getting that stuff. Ah, nice. Look at that, that's freaking nice. That's legit. Probably look like a goon to all these other people in this building. Well, that was way too easy. This is a quick set door handle. I had a quick set latch on here, a deadbolt latch. So I can reuse 
the old key that I've got instead of using these new keys. And the reason I want to do that on the locks that I do for these back doors are a little bit different than what everybody else does. And I think I like this design better because it's, it looks a little bit cleaner, but this is a quick, is a quick set latch as well, lock. And for this back door, I've got this little like little gold latch. And it's neat because you can turn it and then lock it and then it's, it's, it's fixed. Versus if you slide it open, you can just shut it. You have to have, oh shoot, I need to get the key. You have to have the key to open it up. But then it's already shut. And then you can just turn it. But I like this design better, because one, I can just hold the latch back and then I don't have to keep it locked all the time. I can just come in here and open the door as I choose. But I like it and that design better than what a lot of other people do because I feel like it's a little bit more simple. People do this little latch thing, which is cool. You have this, comes down, you latch it, but it's kind of hard to line up. Like I can't. There we go. So now it's latched. But I don't know. What are you guys' opinions? All right, so put it in, turn it, insert the spool, get out, take out your old key, put in the new key, which is my old key, insert, and then turn it. New old key. That works. That's too easy. It's too easy. I guess I could theoretically put the deadbolt down here, but this is pretty hefty. Like, if you're wanting to get in, I don't know, maybe break one of the other 15 windows that I have available. That's cool. Should have done that 12 months ago. So I have a four-year-old, Milo, and he's pretty interested in all the things that I'm interested in. So he uh, plays with my camera and I just realized that he switched the manual focus and autofocus switch, so I'm sorry that everything was in manual focus and wasn't getting focused, but that's my kid. But that's efficient. Function. All right, so I'm just getting the stuff done on the list. The next thing on the list is this bathroom dimensions for Juan's bus. It's always interesting getting dimensions in person versus on paper. Because originally they were shooting for a 30 by 30. This is a Sunmar DTG composting toilet and it is 16 inches wide and it's 24 inches deep. The one they're looking at is about 16 by 19, so it's not quite as deep. This is with the fan, which is why this one's a little longer. But you sit down on it, you got your shoulder width. Shoulder width is between 18 to 24 inches. So I figured somewhere between the window and the middle of the window, we're looking at 25 inches. So the toilet can go here. And the vanity that they picked out is, is 10 inches by 16. 10 inches deep, 16 inches wide. You just think like this, it's 16 and it can fit, but then you'd have to sit here to be able to do the thing, and that didn't make much sense. So we can do it this way, bump it over to the side of the toilet, which pushes at 16, which is right here. So theoretically, they can have a toilet and a sink with a vanity and a pop-up mirror all within about 37, let's go with, with 39 inches. So their bathroom has got an open, kind of like a sliding door. Maybe that'll two-fold for the pantry door. That'd be a clever idea. Come in here, sit down. Ooh, the depth. Depth is going to change because you have your legs. So we're looking at a minimum depth of 41. That's not very efficient there. Yes. Here. We're gonna need to take up two windows. In order for this to be a functional space, we're gonna take up two windows. Two 
supposed to be four inches. The bread goes to here, which is the wall. So we have a wall here. So 54 inches from the wall. Seven inches. That's 37. The walls don't have to be made out of two by fours because there's nothing structural there. They wanted to do a medicine cabinet which sticks out four inches. So maybe I could do a two by four wall which is three and a half, but then we lose three and a half inches of actual interior space. So then that goes from 50 from 48 to one, two, three. We're looking at 52 and a half to 53 inches which then puts it at the base of their bed. So that's still doable. So to have a vanity, a medicine cabinet, hutch, and a toilet, we're looking at around 53 inches deep. I think that's doable. Maybe we'll delete this one because this one's gonna have a wall in the middle and it wouldn't be functional and it's not gonna be functional then it lets you go ahead and put it up, put some insulation in there. Because this will bring in quite a bit of light. You can use it, alleviate the things. Running the drain will be a little tricky because it's on the wheel well there. The downside to making the, the bathroom bigger is their closet's gonna get smaller. Because they want to keep everything in line, symmetrical. So the closet will go to here, which then puts this at about 20 inches. 20 inches is a small closet, but it's full height. So you might be able to do two racks of clothes there. But she has dresses, can't really hang a dress in there. So many options, man. So many options. We got fridge, pantry, closet, bathroom. That's good. Good. You guys might think I'm a spaz, but there we go. All right, so I think that's it right now. All right, well, I just spent like the past hour trying to figure out the plumbing situation and trying to figure out how to fit these biggest tanks, biggest tanks possible into the space with the wheel wells and, and the bed without keeping the bed. It's, it's doable, but if we put those tanks in a certain position, which is the only way position, only position they actually work, they're going to only allow for like 30 inches of headspace. So like when you sit down from back to head, you only have like 30 inches of headspace to be able to sit up. So they're actually taller than I am and even I don't have room to be able to sit up in that. So we have to lower the bed or do a thinner mattress or those tanks aren't gonna work. And I don't think those tanks are gonna work. So that's the details and stuff that gets really tricky when you're trying to do the layout to pick your materials and the functionality behind everything. And that's where I spend a lot of my time is just trying to make sure that everything is efficient as possible and thought out and thorough because if I, we were to order those tanks, one, we'd either not be able to use them and have to spend a lot of money to return them, or two, they wouldn't be able to sit up in their bed. So it's like, all right, look, what is the option around that? But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm actually gonna start making videos again and I've said that a bunch of different times. I think every last video that I've done, I, I've said that. And uh, I think that's gonna be the case. Again, I'll just keep saying it. But I'm stoked on how this came out. Like, why didn't I do that? Uh, and then on a side note, this thing is getting redone, done up, because we're gonna be selling it soon. So details to come on that. If you're really, really interested, go ahead and shoot me an email. Link is in the description. Um, but we're going to sell it for an appropriate price from what the market puts it at. It is a four season turnkey ready livable bus that you could just get in and go. I just drove it from Nashville and it was like 650 miles and had no issues whatsoever. I was getting about eight miles per gallon, going 65 miles an hour, just crank it along. It sucks to sell it, but we're also really excited to sell it because it has provided all of this for us and it's gonna provide for us some new opportunities in the future as well. So more to come on that, but for now. But thank you guys so much for watching. Like it if you like it, dislike it if you don't like it, and if you could subscribe, we'd really, really appreciate it. And yeah, we'll keep doing this. What do you say? What do you say? No, Ella Rose, what do you say to Milo?
I was about to say thank you, Milo. Thank you, Milo. You're welcome, Milo. You guys are so sweet, 3% of the time. Mom, <laughs> you're welcome, Mom. 